Today is another beautiful day in Hiroshima. Today is gonna be, I don't know, might be a tough day. We'll see. We're gonna go see some of the bomb stuff. We're gonna go to the Atomic Bomb Dome and we're gonna go see the Peace Park and the Children's Peace Park. Nope. So as you can see today, Hiroshima is a vibrant, bustling city. Like there's almost no evidence that anything happened almost 80 years ago here. It was uh, 1945. And four years later, the Japanese did a rebuild, a major rebuild program. And within four years, all the buildings were reconstructed. So eight years. That's pretty incredible. But I don't know. We spent the morning watching some videos and trying to figure out the best way to talk to the girls about it. And it's pretty, I don't know, grown up topic, but Lily's really interested in it. And I think it kind of affected her a little bit. We watched a couple things on BBC and PBS. They had some programs put together for the 75th anniversary just a couple years ago. But honestly, there's not a lot of good material out there for young kids. So a Crash Course History, get on that for us. We'd appreciate that. So just have to try and do the best we can to explain it the best they can understand. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to believe, like, 80 years ago, this was all laid to waste, and it's heart-wrenching just to think about. Something to be said about the Japanese people that put it back together after everything. So... I don't know. It's, it's, I don't really know. I don't have anything to say. I don't think there is anything really to say. Just. Mommy, that's it. Just we have to remember the devastation and suffering that went on here. And we have to strive to make decisions that never lead to something like this again. And I don't, know, I don't have anything else to say. So. Yeah, so they say that Hiroshima, the name means broad island, and the city's kind of called like the water city because there's 10 rivers that flow through the city. There's one of them. It's kind of cool, isn't it? It's really sad. Yeah. A lot of emotions. Not sure why, but I didn't expect as much rubble to still be there. It makes sense, but it's just wasn't expecting it. So this is the Children's Peace Monument. And... It's kind of 
and talking about how the kids died of leukemia afterwards in the aftermath. And the bell underneath it signifies peace in the world. These paper cranes are here to people pay tribute by folding a paper crane origami. My tone and attitude here make it seem like I don't care, but that can't be further from the truth. I think what was going through my head at the time was, wow, this is a nice thought and all, but it doesn't change anything. Those kids still suffered and all died. What I didn't consider at the time is that a memorial isn't supposed to change the past. It's supposed to be a reminder to the present. Yeah, the present. Not the future, because only what we do in the present, the here and now, can prevent anything like this from ever happening again. So the idea behind the monument is that there was a little girl that's here, and that's the peace bell right there. It's a little girl, and she ended up getting leukemia after that. And her dying wish was that people would bring a thousand cranes. Um, and there's, in some tradition, it says the one who brings a thousand cranes brings peace. <sighs> so today people can bring these paper folded cranes and donate them to the Children's Peace okay. Monument. So it's a symbol of hope and peace and something like this never happens again. <laughs> Okay, so this is the peace flame, and it was lit in 1964, and it's burned ever since. It's a protest against nuclear weapons in the world, and it will remain lit and burning until every last nuclear weapon on the planet is gone. All right, this is the Fountain of Prayer. And I think that's the end of Peace Park. There's like a museum here and a visitor center, but I don't know. Looks like it's about to rain. Oh man. I'm not sure what I expected today. I don't know what emotions I expected. Don't know what I expected to learn or what I expected anything. Um, I don't know. I still don't know. I'm gonna have to digest this one. Just, I don't know. When we learned about this growing up in grade school, in America, we weren't like taught remorse at that time. I mean, it's just something that we did, something our country did that ended the war. And the end justified the means. At least that's what we were always taught. Whether that's true or not, I'm not going to make that argument. I don't know enough to make that argument. But it's just interesting what we weren't taught growing up. Sky is beautiful. Yikes. <laughs> Thank you.
in front of a nondescript office building in a little side alley behind all the park stuff where there's no tourist and nobody around. That's where the Hypo Center is. First atomic bomb used in history. Exploded 600 meters up right there, right above this spot. 8.15 a.m., August 6th, 1945. Wow. This is where the bomb blew up. I asked that earlier where it was. It was right here. It's actually 600 meters up that way. It blew up in the air. Fitting into our Hiroshima atomic bomb tour. It's starting to rain. 